<laughs> bar napkin pitches. That's right. So if you're on the list to give a bar napkin pitch, make your way up here to this area because you're going to have one minute. We're going to go through very quickly. And for anybody keeping track of time, because you're having so much fun, we have about nine of these. And then we're going to do the vote for the winner um, giveaway. And then we're going to party. Okay. Abigail, you're up. When I walk up here, I'm like, oh, thank you. That's way too tall. Ha, there we are. All right. Go. I'm ready. Go, Matt. <laughs> so last winter, a woman came to us because her elderly client's heat had run out. She was at a very real risk of dying or becoming very, very ill because of it. She had tried traditional resources, and unfortunately, they got caught up in bureaucracy. And so... Within 45 minutes of posting on Spark in the Dark, which is an online platform, 15 people stepped up and paid this woman's bill. She had heat by the end of the night, and more than likely, we saved her life that night, um, which is really an incredible thing if you can imagine living without heat for three days in negative 25 degree weather, which is what it was. So that's what we do every single day at Spark. We provide hope, and we help those that are in need. We have done 25,000 situations, and they've been connected to solutions in just under two years already. So we have outgrown our Facebook platform at this point, and we have 10,000 members. Oh, Matt pushed the wrong button. Yeah, oh, heck, I ran out of time. Anyway, uh, so 10,000 members, and we need to build an app. Sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks so much. Spark in the dark. And now David will take the stage with Spectrum Friends. Hi there, I'm David Bialer, and I used to work for Mozilla, so go Firefox. Um, I am a product management consultant, and I'm also the father of a 24-year-old autistic young man. Um, he, um, so as everybody knows, so Spectrum Friends is an online platform for making friends and possibly finding romance. It's for, um, so everybody knows that the incident of childhood autism is now like one in 58, according to the CDC, and it's growing. The problem is, is that when these children who now get services age out of school, they have nowhere to go, and they're often socially isolated. So Spectrum Friends is an online community. It's a nonprofit, I should say, first of all. It's an online community for people on the autism spectrum to meet in person and meet online. It, um, it is um, a 5013C3 uh, corporation. It uh, has coaches and it has um, volunteers who will coach. And what I'm looking for is volunteers, grants, funds, and things like that. Thank you. Awesome. Hello, Greg. I'm going to let you pronounce this. Look. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. So speedometer and that thing. Um, so let's imagine you fill your gas tank every Thursday. You don't care whether it's empty or full. You just fill it every Thursday. You never look at your speed, uh, fuel gauge. Do you think that's reliable transportation? There's a lot of industries out there that service their devices on a schedule, whether they need it or not. So one of the things uh, we're doing right now, we're working on a project to make a smart toilet. That's got to be the biggest leap. Toilets are pretty uh, dumb, yes, <laughs> and smelling. Uh, so what I'm looking for is any suggestions on another industry where they service it on a periodic interval. And if you've got an idea, I'm over here. Thanks. Fantastic. Kevin Clark with Wood Barrel Smoker. Hello, sir. One of America's you know, favorite pastimes is barbecuing, right? 
and I'm looking for a self-starter and partner uh, to help me manufacture, market, and sell a patented uh, wood barrel smokers. We make them out of wine barrels and whiskey barrels, which infuse special flavors in, into the foods. Uh, these are not just pieces of art or furniture. They are actually functional and flavorful. Uh, and we live right here in the middle of wine country, so we have access to a lot of barrels, right? Um, the barrels heat at about 175 to 275 degrees. Uh, perfect smoking temperatures. Great for smoking meats, fish, vegetables, even baking uh, bread. I've sold dozens of these by just word of mouth. Uh, and I'm willing to supply a warehouse, working capital, uh, and there's a sample smoker out here in the lobby if you're interested to uh, take a look. Thank you. Thank you. Kim Garlington with PhotoPoll. Hey, I'm Kim Garlington. I think we've all been out there at a dreamy destination with people, family, friends, trying to get that perfect photo. So you try to get a selfie, use your selfie stick, pass your phone to strangers, ask them to get the photo. And then later you realize maybe you have half of your face, half the Eiffel Tower. Maybe the person that took the photo didn't tell you when to cheese, so everybody's kind of daydreaming and you didn't get a good picture. So introducing the photo pole, this is a six foot Wi-Fi solar powered um, camera pole that would be positioned in all the perfect places, hot spots around the globe that could sync to your phone, send you in the photo that, the perfect photo with the backdrop, text you, email you, or we'd have a photo poll app that it would upload and keep all of your photos in a collage form and even GPS enabled so that it could tell you if you're hiking around the sound, sand dunes that the photo poll is a photo poll 20, 200 yards from you. So tonight I'm just looking for, um, this is at concept level provisional patent and I'm looking for investors or partners to help me launch. Thank you. Thank you. Laura Witkowski with Design Learning. walk to the oh, music first. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Laura Rudkowski, and I'm a writer. I have two micro businesses serving clients in the writing space. Design learning is focused on creating employee training programs. Give you an example. Many of you in the room maybe have had to take a, a safety course at some point in your career. You clicked on the link, took you to a, a screen, there was narration, welcome to Safety Training 101. You are going to learn X, Y, and Z. The course goes on to teach you X, Y, and Z with some questions at the end. Somebody somewhere had to write every one of those words. That's instructional design, and that's what I do in design learning. Traverse City Resumes is my side line. I help people shine in the marketplace. Most people can look a lot better than they do in the marketplace, and it's, um, it's a, um, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, it's pretty tough out there in the black hole of the, the job market. Uh, oh, I wrote an article for Grand Traverse Woman Magazine that has all my top tips in it this month, and I have copies over at my table, so hopefully I can help you. Thank you. Fantastic. Mary Grumman with Aces Initiative. Somebody got cold feet. That's a first. You want to? Rock it out. Come on up. Right. Mary, a.k.a. Mr. Beetleston. So, oh, wait. wait. Yeah, I have no wait. idea what Mary was going to talk about. <laughs> but here's her slide. Jesus. So as you can see, the really important part about this slide is $124 billion. Uh, and that's what the CDC estimates as the lifetime cost associated with Oh, Jesus, this isn't funny. <laughs> Lisa, let's go to my slide. All right. <laughs> so I actually Good. Oh. Well played. So I had a joke prepared, but it's not nearly as good as what just happened. Uh, but I would encourage you to take your phones out, take a picture of this slide. There's really nothing I can say uh, in the next 60 seconds that's going to do a better job than this slide. 
Um, so one of the biggest challenges in the materials management, i.e. recycling industry right now, is materials capture. We're not getting enough good quality uh, recyclable materials into processing facilities. Traditional waste haulers go where the population's most packed. They focus on serving urban centers. Uh, this creates a lot of competition, a lot of fighting over existing markets. Unfortunately, nobody is looking at the tremendous value in rural communities because the cost is too high. The population is too diffused. So I would love to find out if a decentralized and disruptive ride sharing solution like Uber can be applied to rural waste hauling. Any qualified driver with a truck becomes a rural waste hauler. Um, yeah, that's all we got. Find me out back. Thank you. Russ Ryba, VR Moon Rover. Hello, sir. Hi there. Okay, I think most people here know me. I've been here for about four years on, on the board and stuff. Uh, I have, since I was a little kid, had a dream of basically driving a robot around the moon because the moon is only like one light second away, so you can do it more or less in real time. And then this weekend, I went to the Michigan Space Forum and I ran into a whole bunch of people uh, and they're kind of like, hey, I'm an astronaut, I'm on the space station, I'm a general, I'm all this stuff. And it's like, so what do you do? It's like, I write software and live two blocks away. Uh, and so then it's, I told them my dream about piloting stuff around the moon. And instead of saying I'm crazy, they basically said, hey, how much money do you want? What's your time frame? I have no idea. So I need to basically come up with a plan to build a robot, launch it to the moon and all that. And there's people actually interested in sort of kind of funding it, and I don't know how to do it. But if it was on Earth, I could do it. So if anybody wants to help on this really cool project, um, that's my plan. $500 will launch about an ounce to the moon. Um, and there we go. Help me out, please. <laughs> Sarna Salzman with Seeds. Thanks, and I think I'm your last one tonight. So let's talk trash. I wanna talk about the end of the life cycle for buildings and construction waste. I wanna talk about translating trash into treasure and creating a grand detour from the landfill into a series of vertically integrated enterprises. Um, this will start by transitioning from a, de, uh, a demolition mindset to a deconstruction mindset. And as materials are diverted up this value chain of enterprises, the net revenues also increase. Um, this is not a unicorn business. This is a series of zebras. Uh, so good, modest returns um, and a local kind of flavor to it. So um, we start with taking the recycling materials out of the landfill. We do direct resale and keep um, building that resale marketplace and start doing more value added with those um, materials and then get back into artisanal restructuring like reupholstering kind of crafts and then we get to do training and retooling. So looking for support on feasibility, piloting and expanding what's already working. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.